Charles, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you too, man. So let's get right into it. So SAS Red Notice, what made you respond to this material? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, firstly, you know, I think we all love an action movie, but this one really has uh, a real difference to it. The fact that it has this great character study in the center of it uh, about uh, a special forces operator who finds out that he's actually, in fact, a good psychopath. Um, and for the chance for me to, to work with Andy McNabb, who obviously uh, wrote the book and, and it's based on him, and he is indeed also a good psychopath, it was uh, just fascinating to sort of spend time with him and to, to really dig into the character. I'm sure over the years, you know, being in the entertainment world and, and connecting with the people that you have and being a pretty physical person, you've met a few SAS, ex SAS guys. Um, what have you taken away from those conversations or those relationships? And were there any people that you tried to um, glean information or, or you know, expertise from this on? Yeah, absolutely, I did. Yeah, I, I reached out to a, a number uh, of ex uh, special forces um, to get uh, a real understanding of of that world. Um, but to be honest, you know, Andy for me was probably the the, the most um, helpful uh, because of the psychopathy of it. You know, the military side. Obviously, we did I did a great deal of training for that um, with with uh, you know obviously the, the weaponry and and working with Andy. You know about how to sort of clear compounds and how to move tactically. But yeah, the psychopathy there all was, was really uh, down to him. Um, and he was very open about it and would spend hours with me, you know, just talking about it. Was there one thing, or like you said, there's a few things that you, you took from those conversations, but was there one thing or two things in particular that maybe you can recall pretty easily that made their way either into the way that you portrayed the character or, or made it into the final product? Yeah, we did. I mean, a lot of the dialogue actually, and, and some of the situations in, in the movie are actually from Andy's real life. And I mean, there's, uh, there's very early on in the movie, we hear um, uh, Hannah's character, you know, Sophie talking to another passenger of the train about how he doesn't feel things and how when her cat died, he put her in the fridge to, to, to preserve the cat while they went on holiday. And um, this is actually something that Andy did. Um, also like, you know, little things, you know, I wanted to really pepper the, the, the movie with just little hints that, that Tom might be slightly different. And one of, one of them is that, you know, he, he can't read emotion. He can't, uh, he can't always know what people are thinking or feeling. So he's really studying them. And I think, you know, you get to see a couple of those moments when Tom is studying Sophie or other people where he, he just can't quite read them. Um, they're also quite unblinking, uh, psychopaths. They don't blink a lot. Um, they, uh, they've obviously learned uh, behavior, so they're very charming. They, they know how to, to, well, they've learned to be in social situations, but they don't know how to be in social situations. So um, really intriguing character to, to play. For sure. Um, talking about those ex-special forces, are there anybody in particular you want to shout out or that you had a conversation with that you gleaned some important information on as far as the military side of it? Yeah, I did. Oh, I trained. I trained in <clears throat> with uh, Etienne in, in uh, Ferreira in in South Africa, who gave me a lot of um, stuff. He actually trains the the NYPD SW um, SWAT team and also the Israeli Special Forces. So he was really helpful. Um, there's actually a couple of ex Marines um, in the UK that gave me a great deal of of insight. But to be honest, as I said, you know, Andy really was kind of the most um the most intriguing you know he spent a great deal of time undercover in in africa in ireland he's been on a great number of uh, missions behind enemy lines he was famously captured in in iraq and, and held in iraq and actually tortured for over a year so um he he just has extensive knowledge of, of that world and really opened up about all of it how did those conversations happen? Were they just over the phone? Did you Zoom with him? Was it back in the days when we could have a proper whiskey and sit down and have a long bar right. chat with him? How did, how did you sort of have those interactions with him? Yeah, I mean, a lot, all of, the, all of the above, really. You know, we sat down a lot. Initially, he flew up to Scotland. We sat, we had dinner, we talked. Um, then I was in actually in Amsterdam working on the script with the writer. And at the time we had a lot of questions for Andy. So we got on the phone to him. Andy at this point was racing the Royal Marines in a military uh, maneuvers in Wales. He was, he was climbing over the mountains with a full Birkin backpack. Um, and meanwhile, on the phone to us, giving us advice. So, I mean, the guy is incredible. Um, then I, you know, I, I was with him um, 
we actually went to, uh, to Leeds and we, we actually went out with the local constabulary there and uh, witnessed uh, some some drug uh, some uh, sort of drug interventions or uh, the tactics they use to sort of do a drug bust. So that was really interesting as well. So we spent a great deal of time together and he, he really is a fascinating character to study. That lead situation sounds super interesting. So was there, is there any moment that you remember? Was there, you know, were they breaking down doors? How were those tactics sort of, or something that stuck in your mind as far as like, oh, this is crazy to be around this right now and get to see the inside workings of this training? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, it's probably more about how people operate. You know, traditionally, I think certainly, you know, we, we see action movies and you know, anything with any violence in and it's all very high energy. Um, the, the characters, you know, very emotional and uh, uh, very aggressive, but actually, you know, the, the military and especially the SAS, it's controlled aggression um, using your voice, uh, using your bodies, but, but it's, it's, never, it's never out of anger. You know, it's all very controlled. And I think that's what's really interesting. And certainly in these situations, even their voices, you know, they're, they're just, it's just a matter of fact every day. Yet, yet they're in this stressful, high octane situation. But the actual operators, it's just another day in the office. The movie looks incredible too. I mean, some of the vistas, I mean, it gets me excited to travel again, the opening shot. Mm. Obviously it's not ideal circumstances. I don't hope to be uh, involved with anything like that, but Tell me about the filming of and any places that you got to go that were um, interesting or exciting. Yeah, yeah, we did. You know, it, this this movie really does go to quite a few different countries where we were in, uh, obviously shot in, in Budapest, but we were in Paris, um, obviously where the, the Eurostar goes, uh, London, uh, also Spain as well. And um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I, you know, it was so fun to travel and I do miss it myself as well. But um, it does give you a real scope because, you know, part of the movie is set underground in very cramped, confined um, uh, situations. So it's it's also nice to then have the, these epic uh, vistas and, and different landscapes. And we, we end in uh, in Spain and you see a sort of where where Tom has ended up. And it does give you a little hint of a possible sequel as well. Absolutely. I, I really enjoyed that little hint there. That was great. And I, I look forward to another one. So, you know, obviously... For you being someone who trains pretty frequently, don't necessarily have to dial in for anything. It's not like you're doing these huge weight shifts and you have to get ready for an SAS movie. Did you work with your usual trainer? Did you do anything in the gym in particular, knowing that you would be uh, portraying a, a military special forces character? Yeah, I did actually. I mean, I, I so I just finished shooting Bloodshot um, in, in South Africa and I put on uh, quite a bit of, a bit more weight for that. Um, wanted to be as muscular as I could be in, in a sort of short space of time. Um, but then for, for this, um, you know, I only had a number of weeks before I started shooting, but I wanted Tom to be, you know, not as, uh, I guess, you know, you look at the SAS, uh, they're not, you know, uh, extremely large guys. They're actually, you know, quite small because they, they have a lot of stamina. They, they're used to, you know, being able to travel long distances and, and carry, you know, great amount of weight. So, um, I did adapt uh, my training to sort of suit that. I did a lot more sort of weighted, weighted runs, weighted carries, and um, trimmed down a bit. Um, and then uh, a lot of gym work as well. You know, just trying to build on stamina and, and power and endurance, um, as opposed to sort of more traditional weightlifting. I suppose. Did you do that all in yourself, or did you work with uh, John or one of the other trainers you've worked with in the past? Yeah, yeah. So, I, well, as I said, I worked with Etienne, in, um, who's uh, also got a Krav, Krav Maga um, school in South Africa. And um, that kind of training was really useful. It's very physical um, and also a great workout as well. And we did a lot of like high stress uh, training. So it would be, you know, to, training to failure and then training we uh, with weapons. So your heart rate is up, your your you don't have much strength left, you're exhausted, and then having to do an operate, you know, operate machine, uh, operate weaponry. So it was uh, really intriguing to sort of work in that sort of stress situation. Um, and then with my trainer who I work with in, in Scotland, um, we were devised a sort of workout plan, which, which would um, help sort of lean me up a little bit more, but also keep that sort of strength and, and, and endurance as well. Uh, who, who's the trainer that you work with in Scotland or is it just, uh, is that a trade secret? Oh no, his name John John Valbanesi. He's um, he's been my trainer on Outlander for a number of years, and 
Um, he also works with me on my, my peak challenge, which is my, um, fitness, um, charity fundraiser. Uh, he's our head coach on that. And, uh, yeah, so we, we have a sort of a, a great, I guess, a great bond, but also a great sort of history between us. So, um, I do find that I can quite quickly sort of adapt to whatever, whatever the role requires. I love it, man. Well, thanks so much for the time.